good to see everybody tonight. Amen. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Why don't we just give him a hand clap of praise real quick? Amen. He's been good. We're going to have a, a time of prayer right now. There's a lot of different needs. Um, there's been a lot of text messages go out, a lot of them that I can't even remember, but the Lord knows them. And uh, if you've got a need, just like I say every time, every time we pray, make it known. Speak it out. That way, you know, Brother Terrence, something we won't ever forget, that, that uh, preacher that came said, when you pray prayers, they never die. That they continually bounce off of everything in the atmosphere. So you speak that prayer to the Lord, and you're going to claim on to that healing or that whatever the answer is for it. And you believe with it, with faith. And I believe in with you that it's going to happen. So if you've got a need, let's pray about it, and let's ask the Lord, the, the one that can make a way to make a way tonight. Lord, we come before you with a thankful heart tonight, God. You've been so good to us. No matter what we've been through, no matter what we've faced, you have been good to us. And I come before you thankful, God. I've seen you do many miracles lately. I've seen you do many miracles in my past, and then you've done them for me. And I'm coming to you with faith because of that. I pray for every need in this place. God, whether it be a sickness, whether it be somebody that has a need in their mind or a depression, or they're battling anxiety or stress, or maybe they need a situation to, to just be taken care of. God, maybe somebody's battling a... a Maybe somebody's ready to walk away or somebody thinks that this might be their last service or somebody don't know what tomorrow even holds. I just pray, God, that they find their answer tonight. I pray that they can find faith, God, in the middle of their fear, that they can find the answer to a prayer. And I'm claiming it, God, tonight. I'm just praying that your will be done in every one of these needs. If somebody's sick, let them walk away healed. If somebody's hurting, let them walk away feeling better. I pray for everybody that's got pain in their joints or any kind of pain in their body or got any kind of a cancer or any disease or anything, God, that may be afflicting their body. I pray against that in the name of Jesus tonight. And I pray for this service, Lord, that you'll let a liberty set upon it and let us continue to worship your name, God, because you are worthy in the name of Jesus.
wonderful is he to you? How wonderful is that name to you? What's he mean to you? What, what has he done for you? scripture that's been on my mind today that talking about offering praises to him and how beautiful and how wonderful is I, I've thought lately about Job and uh, the song, the Psalms 34 and 1 scripture hasn't been able to get out of my head but that's probably my favorite scripture in the Bible uh, really just because of dad preached a message a few years ago about it and, I, and he had John Michael come up and read the scriptures and I've never been able to get it out of my head since but it, you know, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. That may not mean mean a whole lot to everybody, but it's about when you're in the valleys. It's when you're barely able to stand and you lift your hands up, anyways. It's when you're going through the, the deepest hell that you could go through that people don't even realize. And you come to church and you come to the front. And you raise your hands or you, you run the aisles or, you know, people don't see the hell that you're facing. But I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. Not when I'm feeling good, not when things are going good. But, and don't everybody have to know it. But when things are bad, I'm still going to praise Him. When things are going down and, and, and nobody even knows what I'm going through, God is still worthy of my praise. It, it don't even matter how I feel. Sister Crystal, he's been good enough already for me to praise him eternally. I cannot praise him enough for what he's done in my past, let alone for what he's doing right now and in the future. Amen. So he is worthy of all of the praise that we can offer. Amen. If Sister uh, Scarlett will get the different ways to give tonight, we're going to take up our tithing and offering. We got GiveLify, PayPal is available at RiverbendPentecostals.com. Cash and checks can be mailed to Riverbend Pentecostals, P.O. Box 477, New Madrid, Missouri, 63869. We also have text to give, and that number is 833-883-9311. Amen. And just like always, we're going to say this prayer with faith, believing that these things are going to come to pass. Amen? Amen. Amen. Say it with me. Upon the authority of your word I have given, and it shall be given unto me. Pressed down, shaking together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked, the curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received, my whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in and I am blessed going out and all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. Give as the Lord has given unto us.
faith-building song. One of my favorites. I, I, I turn that thing on and I'll just walk around the yard, whatever I'm doing, and listen to that. And man, you talk about just lifting your spirits. Amen. As the, as the children are going ahead and coming up here, that song also reminded me of something. Uh, Brother Larry would like this. Y'all can go ahead and be seated too as the children are coming up. Uh, Brother Johnny James preached a message a long time ago, and that, that verse right there, it said, I am who I am because the I am tells me who I am. It reminded me of who you are, who I am. He said, the government calls you a taxpayer. Sports calls you a player. Schools calls you a student. You can go on and on and on of what you call, but he said, Jesus calls you mine. Amen. It don't matter. You could, you could go over and over and over about what you are, what your occupation is how much money you got, all this. But what matters is Jesus said, you're mine. Right. Amen. Regardless of your past, present, future, you're mine. And that's what I'm reminded of whenever I hear that song. Yeah. Amen. And it builds my faith. Amen. We got all our children up here. And that number is growing every time, ain't it? Yeah. Hallelujah for that. Yeah. Got a good looking group of kids up here. Amen. If you will, let's stretch our hands up here. Let's pray for these youngins right now. God, I pray right now for every young person that's up here. Lord, we, we tend to overlook them, overshadow them, act like things don't happen. But, Lord, if we could just grow a little bit like they are, we'd see mountains move. We'd see miracles happen. We'd see all these visions come to pass if we could just get the faith they have. Lord, so instead of praying just for them, I pray that their faith will uh, be contagious unto us. Lord, I pray for them to affect us in a positive way. 
Lord, I pray that when they go tonight, when they go next week, when they go Sunday, I pray for everything they do now, Lord, to just lift their faith and get them stronger and, and get them more rooted in the Word of God and in the Spirit of God and, and build their submission in, in to the man of God. And I pray that it will overflow into this church and overflow into our lives because we will see mountains move if we can grow faith like these children. Amen. They believe anything is possible. And I wish I could believe the same thing. So I want to get a glimpse of that hope. God, and I pray that you'll help them tonight. In the name of Jesus, amen. Y'all go ahead and head on back. And as they're heading on back, why don't the youth make their way on up here? Amen. Let's pray for these, these youth up here right now, too. God, I pray right now for every young person that is up here. I pray for every young person, Lord, that's not here tonight, that if they were missing, because we're better with them here. Lord, I pray that you'll strengthen them, that you'll strengthen their faith. God, that you'll let them make right decisions, make godly decisions. I pray that everything they do every day is led by the Spirit of God. I pray that their faith be led, God, just like we just sang about, that they'll be led by their, by their faith and not by sight. Lord, and I pray for your will to be done in every one of their lives, God. Tonight's just a stepping stone in the right direction. I pray that we have a good time back there, that we, we learn, that we love, and that we are friendly to each other, God, because it's, it, we need to become friends. We're a family. I believe that we're going to, God. I believe that we're growing together. We're going somewhere together. In the name of Jesus. Man, y'all head on back, Brother Richard, and the rest of y'all, Pastor. I don't know if that was a good introduction or not. I thought he was fixing to say the rest of y'all are stuck with Pastor. But uh, happy, uh, we've got Sister Casey and Sister Carly are at camp with seven of our little ones, and uh, we had two of those filled with the Holy Ghost last night. Amen. Amen. And for the first time, this is new. Yeah, I've been finishing them every Wednesday, at least for the last two. Yeah, that's right. I turned over a new leaf. I'm glad everybody's here tonight. Thank you for coming. And uh, I uh, know the songs are good. The praise and worship time is good. Amen. God's always faithful and worthy of our praise, isn't he? Yes. Amen. Uh, we got, man, we got some good things going. Last night, we had, a, we had our first recovery meeting at Parman. I think a lot of people thought they needed to come because there may not be nobody there. And, uh, well, we ended up having about 50 there and a great majority of them were were all the people from our church but we did have seven seven people who had never been to a recovery meeting before and uh they not exciting uh we had uh we had uh one from parma named sister carolyn that's all i prayed for let's have one we did amen hey don't rain on my parade. I'm happy. I was thrilled to death seeing Aunt Carolyn there. And, uh, and then uh, Paige's grandma came and uh, uh, Lacey's husband, ex something. Yeah. Yeah. He came and he was incredibly moved and shared. And uh, hey. Don't nobody need to doubt the Lord ever, right. ever doubt the Lord, right. what he can do. Amen. Sister Shelley's not here tonight, but uh, she, uh, um, she told it at Elements Sunday, but she, uh, her husband was in the hospital and she just prayed and talked in tongues and stuff, refusing to believe that he was sick and Finally, the nurse said, whatever you want, whatever you got, I want it. And she prayed with her, and the old gal fell out on the floor talking in tongues, prayed the nurse through to the Holy Ghost, 
I told you all that stuff was going to start happening. And the other old boy claimed he was an atheist, but he became a churchgoer this past weekend because he went to the house of God. He texted her to tell her he did. Sister, Sister Courtney wrote in the bulletin, did y'all see that this past week, where she laid hands on somebody and prayed for him that wasn't a family member for the first time in her life. And God healed him. Amen. Hey, we can't be surprised. We cannot be surprised when God uses everybody, not anybody, everybody that will submit themselves to him. I like it. I like it, I said. I'm thrilled to death. Um, God's doing great things. The fear of the Lord, part four. And I want to remind you that don't, don't get hung up on that word, the fear of the Lord, because it's not to be terror filled with terror or be af afraid of the Lord in the traditional sense, but that is a word that it actually kind of means respect, but it's higher than respect. And uh, awe and amazement. And like some of y'all would feel if you went and watched Elvis in concert back in the day. Really. People feel that crazy awe and awareness. Mama told me about somebody going to an Elvis concert and I think he touched their hand and they refused to wash it for weeks or maybe even months uh, till it withered up and fell off. No, I'm just teasing. But uh, it's, y'all get the gist of it. It is, there's supposed to be something about the Lord that ain't nobody else got. And you don't treat anybody else like that. You don't give anybody else that kind of respect and that kind of, Awareness. Can I get an amen in the house? There's got to be a shift that takes place because there are many in the religious world. I'm just going to go on record right now. I ain't never getting me a stool and sitting on it while I preach. I'd lose my mind. We ain't never going to start having groceries in the church house where you just bring your supper with you and eat it while church is going on. We ain't going to do that. This is a holy place. It's a separate place. It's a sanctified place. And you can't be doing the work of the Lord, praising God, and listening to what the preacher's saying, gnawing down on a hot pocket <laughs> and a Mountain Dew. This is the house of God. And that's where the fear of the Lord begins at, is an awareness that when you come into the presence of the Lord and when you feel the presence of the Lord, when you recognize that he's there, whatever was going on in your life, we're already good at it. I told you all that a couple of weeks ago. It's that same feeling when your phone buzzes in your pocket and you tell everybody that's in your world, time out, this is more important. Okay. It's, it's true. It's true. So let's review a little bit. Isaiah 6 and 1 through 3, we learned that that. Isaiah saw the presence of the Lord. He said, the year King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord. And he was high and lifted up and his train filled the temple and there were angels there. And remember, they cried, how? One to another. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled with his glory. And we learned that, that our continuous praise, and they've, they've been saying this same prayer and singing this same song since the beginning of creation. And the only reason a song ever gets old is the, the one you're singing it about didn't have the meaning that it needed to. If we have an awareness of who we're singing about, who we're worshiping, it will never get old. Never get old. It never has for the angels. And they sing praises magnifying God and exhorting one another and testifying to one another. But the angels cannot experience redemption or the new birth, even though they want to, right? Which things the angels desire to look into. There we learned last week that there's an ever-present newness of God. You remember what we mean by that? Anybody? That's right. As soon as you think you got him figured out, you learn something new about him. 
My wife talked about it last night at recovery. There is more. We can't ever, there are no plateaus in the revelation of God. The plateau is just a flat spot on the way up the mountain. Don't ever think. That's why we have so many religions in the world, so many denominations in the world, beginning with Martin Luther and the Protestant Reformation. Uh, everybody who got a new snippet of revelation thought they got all the revelation. Okay? Anybody that got a new revelation thought they got it all, and they homesteaded right there instead of continuing to pursue the Lord. And then you've got John Wesley, and you've got John Calvin, and you've got uh, Knox, and, and all the others that are considered the father of different uh, religions, different denominations, and it was because they homesteaded on what they got from God instead of continuing to push forward. But the way you push forward was how? By going back to where? The day of Pentecost, amen? How it was in the beginning, Right? Right? That repentance and remission of sins would be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. We must rejoice at the fullness of what we've got right now, but we must always be hungry for more. If there's nothing new coming in your life spiritually, then it wasn't because God held it from you. It's because you stopped being hungry. God have mercy on us if we do that. Can I get another amen? Y'all going to get with me tonight. Okay. The message of the universe. We're reviewing Psalms 145, 10 and 11 says, All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints shall bless thee. That's us. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power. The, mess, the, the world, the universe, all of creation is praising the Lord and is speaking of his glory, of his kingdom, and of his power. How are they doing it? By simply being there and staying where he put them, just like he wanted them. Remember we said he measured out the heavens by the breadth of his hand. He measured out the seas in the palm of his hand. He is a big God. The heavens declare his glory. Psalms 19, 1 through 4 in the New Living Translation says, the heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display his craftsmanship. Day after day, they continue to speak. Night after night, they make him known. They speak without a sound or word. Their voice is never heard, yet their message has gone throughout the earth and their words to all the world. Have you ever thought about this? The sunsets haven't got any prettier since they first started. The leaves in the fall hadn't gotten no prettier since they first started turning. Have they? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. The sun rising up over the ocean, if you've ever been privileged to wake up on the beach, ain't never gotten no prettier. Huh? Look at here. One of these days, I'm going to do a little bit of Bible teaching on climate change. I just want y'all to know that. Get ready for it. And that don't mean you can start being a litter bug and making a mess and all of that. But I want you to know the world's going to stay here till the Lord says it ain't. Because look what the Bible says. The works of heaven and earth are reserved, 2 Peter 3 and 7. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, that's the word of creation. Look here. They are kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. See it? He spoke them and they stayed. Can I get a witness? They have. They've stayed the same. We talk, we, listen, we talk about the glaciers melting and stuff. That's happened several times throughout history. Matter of fact, there's parts of the United States used to be under it. It melted and we survived. Okay? The earth, the work, the mankind doesn't have the power to overrule God in any area except your own life. The works of heaven and earth are still where he put them, still doing what he told them to do. The tides 
Anybody besides me ever went to the beach and was scared the first time you looked at it? At the magnitude, at the power of it, Brother Jerry, if it wanted to rise up and come over there, wasn't nothing I can do about it. But you know how far it goes, Brother David? How far he told it to go. And it has for eons of time. All of creation has stayed where it's supposed to stay except mankind. The only creation that needs to be improved on, that needs to grow, that needs to mature more, that needs to be fulfilled is mankind. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse number 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. Completion, maturity. We're not there yet. Why are we not there yet? Sin messed us up. The reason why we're not complete is because sin messed us up. And we have to continue to crucify this flesh, Brother Terrence, because guess what? I can be good on Monday and bad on Tuesday because it's a continual work. It's a continual per going on unto perfection. Do we see that? Please don't think you've arrived because if you think you've arrived, the Bible said you better take heed lest you fall. The magnitude of the universe and what is man. Remember the psalmist said in Psalm chapter 8, when I consider how big it is, how beautiful it is, how constant it is, how constant it is. 4.3 light years to the nearest star past the sun. You'll remember how you figure a light year? Anybody remember? Light travels at 186,000 miles per second. And a light year is the distance light would travel in a 365 day year at 186,000 miles per second. So, that's the nearest star. We have seen stars 13.2 billion light years away from us. That's the furthest that man has seen with the telescope or artificial means. And everything is still like it was since the beginning. Except us. Except us. We all need improving. I'll say this again. All y'all need to be at recovery. Every last one of us. We should just have to move the chairs out of the way and set a big old circle up in here and all of us work the steps. You know something, Sister Maria? Do you feel that Henri rise up in here every time I say that? Do you? I feel it. I know it's here. You ain't what you need to be. You ain't done yet. How do we know you ain't done yet? You're still breathing. I've preached a message. It, it ain't been all that long ago, but, you know, time runs together when you get old. You reckon I ought to tell them about what they said about that funeral the other day? Sister Peaches said, we talked about you quite a bit after we got home. She said, I'm going to tell you, I don't know whether to be flattered by this or upset by it, what I'm about to tell you. But she said, I will tell you what one person said. That's a good-looking old white man. <laughs> First, I was flattered till the old started resonating in my head. And then I'm like, I don't know if that's cool or not. <laughs> this is true, brother. This is true. We had some people needed their eyes opened who were there but what is man really the magnitude of how big the world is and what is man that thou art mindful of him what is it brother Blake that out of all this bigness you can be driving down the road and say, Lord, I need you, and he's there. Yeah. 
You can cry out to God and he hears your voice. And not only does he hear your voice, Sister Maria, he knows who's talking. How big he is. And yet how personal he is. The fear of God. That's why we need to fear him. Ain't nobody else like that. Nobody else like that. So let's talk about the necessity of following God's pattern unto order. I want to say this. You are never going to try God's patience till the point that he treats you like a spoiled child treated by their parent. You are never going to be so stubborn that the Lord finally says, do whatever you want. He will not violate who he is for anybody. God has a pattern unto order. And the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord recognizes that I need his order in my life and the only way I'm going to get there is do it his way. So, in the beginning, the Bible says God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. That means formless and chaotic. Genesis chapter 1 verse number 2. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved. And if has anybody ever looked up that word moved, it means hovered. The Spirit was not active yet. I'm about to preach a minute. Can I just throw like a 30-second message in here? Look at here. And the Spirit of God hovered upon the face of the waters. You see what number two says? Does anybody see what number two says on your handout? Right there where I'm talking? Y'all following along with the brother? The Word of God releases order. The Spirit did not become active until the word was spoken. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. But until the word went forth, let me tell you the first step to find an order in your life is don't move till you get a word from God. Oh, I got to just dig down a little bit. How many of us could testify right now that if we would have waited to act until we got a word from God, everything would have been better? How many of us have spent our entire Christian life, our entire walk with God, digging ourselves out of messes and praying for God to deliver us out of messes that we didn't consult him on getting there? God's order, it cannot be violated. And in the beginning, there was chaos. No form, no boundaries, no division. You remember that from Sunday, I hope. And the Spirit of God was moving over the waters, hovering. That word hovering or, or brooding over the waters. But when the word went forth and God said, let there be light and there was light, don't move if you ain't got a word. Say, well, what if I do if I don't get a word? Huh? Wait. 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 God's, the necessity of following God's pattern under order. I got a little typo there, but. The word of God releases order. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, and it was good. Lord. What was he doing when he saw the light? What happened when God looked at man? Come on now. He's evaluating his creation. He looked at man and said, uh uh it was not good. For man to be alone. But he looked at the light. Man, I wish I could preach a little bit. I wish it wasn't Bible study. 
He looked at the light and saw that it was good, just like I wanted it to be. It's worked just, just like I wanted it to be. It's ordered like I want it to be. And then God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day. So we notice that the spirit didn't move until the first word was given. God spoke it. God saw it. God divided it. Then he named his created order and gave it a place. He spoke it. He checked it out and evaluated it. He gave it order, divided it. Night and day, he gave it its place. Then he gave it a name. And he gave it a place to be in. The night, evening, and the morning were the first day. He started it like that and he continued it like that. Six days of created order. And finally, the capstone, the crowning achievement was the creation of mankind, Genesis 2 and 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. I would argue to you that this is a type of the natural birth and the spiritual birth. With the natural birth, birth being when God created you and the spiritual birth being when the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were all with one accord in one place and Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. It is the breath of God breathing into the world. The Bible tells us very clearly that the word was breathed into existence by God. There's something powerful happening when the Lord breathed into man. But verse Genesis 2 and 25 says that man, that was both of them, man and woe man, were naked and not ashamed. Anybody ever thought about that a little bit? Where would the shame come from? It ain't happened yet. They were naked and were not ashamed. Now the lack of shame, when you say ashamed, the lack of shame is relative but it's so powerful in this instance in that there was no need for an outward covering. Due to the presence of the knowledge of the glory of God within them. You see, a shame refers to a lack of confidence or the danger of ridicule or the fear of being inadequate, none of which were available when they were in a constant state of manifesting the glory of God. Yes. Ironically enough, I've read this, I don't know how many times. Ironically enough, the paralyzing sense of shame is the foremost identifying factor due to one that's bound by addiction. They have a paralyzing sense of shame as well as the superficiality of what the world considers attractive, provocative, and beautiful. If you don't line up to what the world thinks, you feel ashamed of yourself. Stop insulting yourself like that. Stop insulting God like that. As if we have to live up to some kind of standard that the world created. Because I preached it, and I'll tell you, but as soon as you line up to the standard the world set, they change it. But the will of God never changes. The will of God for you never changes. We fight the shame through chasing a high. Say, whoo, I know it clears me up. I ain't never done dope before. You chased a high. Some of us here in this church, we chase the high of being God in somebody's life. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like I'm meddling a whole bunch tonight, but I ain't scared of it. It kind of feels good. We chase highs. Sister Crystal's talked about it prolifically. We chase highs of buying things. Has anybody ever found yourself in the checkout line with a whole buggy full of stuff you didn't need? 
and ask yourself, what in the world am I doing? It's a high. It does. It does. I deserve it. I deserve to feel better. We buy things. We eat. Oh, Lord. That dude keeps on preaching. We ain't going to have nothing fun left to do. I'm looking for God's order. I'm looking for the pattern for God's order. They were both naked and were not ashamed. Look at here what the Bible says in Psalms 8 and 5. Man in his creation was crowned with glory and honor. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and hast crowned him. That word crown means surrounded or encircled or, or smothered or one a New Testament word might be what? Oh, come on now. And he told them, go tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued means the same thing. You know what the, I feel the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is just bringing us back to where we were supposed to be in the beginning. Okay, all right. Man was crowned with glory and honor for thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and has crowned him with glory and honor. The covering with which man was created and that sin stole with, how did sin steal that covering? Oh, I wish I was, somebody said this to me yesterday. I wish they were here. I'd let them say it again. They may be here. I don't remember who it was. That's that old junk again. Sin took our covering. When we decided I can do whatever I want, with whomever I want, however I want, and whenever I want, and that's a covering and a crown of death. The Lord gave us life, and Adam and Eve were naked and they weren't ashamed. It wasn't because it's not it's, that it's cool to walk around naked. It wasn't anything to do with that. But there was no knowledge of good and evil because they rested under the covering of God, the crown that God put them. They were surrounded with the power of God. And when they decided to be God, when they decided to be God, the Lord let them. And he took away that covering. And they immediately, Brother Christian, felt ashamed and they felt embarrassed and they felt the need to do something. They felt the need to do something. Talking about the fear of the Lord. They lost it. They lost the fear of God and became afraid of God. Because when he came looking for them, they run and hid. Eden means a delightful place in the presence of the Lord. And the blessings of Eden are almost indescribable. The garden just grew. Fruit just grew. The vegetables just grew. Nobody had to cultivate it. It wasn't grown up. It wasn't weedy. It, everything was just ordered like it was supposed to be. There was perfect harmony between all of God's creations, animals and man. There was no sickness, there was no disease, there was no poverty. And Adam and Eve walked with God on the regular. How could it be any better? Yet they still desired to be king. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, ain't it crazy how her thinking became aligned with the devil's? The crazy thing about that Brother David, the devil was lying. And she believed it. Not only did she believe it, then she started seeing it, just like the devil told her. When she saw that it was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes, which still blows my mind, what's that got to do with anything when the Lord said no, but it's pretty? Big whoop. Pretty's relative. Pretty is only pretty compared to ugly. 
Who gets to decide that? Huh? It was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She didn't know that. The devil told her, and she believed it. She took the fruit thereof, and she ate. And that girl messed everything up. But look at here. Husband was a dummy. And she gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Nobody didn't trick Adam. Nobody deceived Adam. He just lost the fear of God in the desire to please his wife and to be a part of what she had going on. I don't want to cause no trouble for y'all, but that was out of order in itself. Adam was designed to be the leader. He was the one that had the first connection with God. I preached a message several years ago called When Ahab Gave Up His Ring. Does anybody remember that? I'll do better on it next time. Go ahead, Brother Kevin. I don't have a microphone, man. Well, that's a, that's a good con uh, conversation to have. I've considered it as well. Where was Adam when the devil was around? Good, good call. Good call. Ad Eve was deceived by the devil. Adam wasn't. He knew exactly what he was doing. He violated the law of God. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew they were naked, and they felt the desire to cover themselves. Rebellion's prize was... They lost the glory, the covering, and found, they lost the glory covering and found death, Genesis 3 and 21. And God made them skins. They realized they were uncovered. I'm not doing a very good job talking about that. But what is it? What is it when you know you've got a covering and then it's lost? Or do you see the picture? Don't get caught up in the naked in the clothes thing. But they were blissfully unaware that they were covered by the glory of God. And it's not an outward covering, but an inward knowledge of a covering. And then they lost it, and they started looking for something on the outside. And they made something. They didn't consult anybody, but man of his own wiles and of his own ability, they made him a covering. And the Lord came along and said, that's not good enough. And for the first time in the history of mankind, something died. Death came. The awareness of their lack of covering and a weak, incomplete covering came over them. Clearly and quickly, they understood that they traded down. When they took the devil's wiles and when Adam gave in to what Eve wanted him to do, they realized very quickly that they had traded down. God made them skin coverings. And with every step they took, the evidence of the impact of their failure upon the entire world was literally resting on their shoulders with the weight of a sacrifice's skin as their only covering, a constant reminder as they wrapped it around their shoulders, discombobulated in their mind because they lost that respect for God through disobedience. They were dismissed from Eden, Genesis 3, 23 through 24. I want to see if you pick this up. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. I want to talk about humility. So the Lord sent him out. But look what verse 24 says. So he drove out the man. And he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. What does that tell us? The Lord told him to leave and then he drove him out. 
I never saw it, Brother Shannon. But now something's got a hold of my heart. I remember one time, Garrison, yeah, he's here tonight. Am I running out of a microphone? We lived over here on Davis Street where y'all live. There's probably still some fingerprints in that door frame because Garrison got mad at me and said, I'm running away. Well, immediately, because I was smarter than him at the time, whether I am now or not, still debatable, but I was at the time. I said, you can't run away from here because you don't live here no more. And I opened the door and I grabbed him. And I put him out. But the only thing was, Brother Jerry, there was a problem. Because he locked onto the doors. And he started kicking and clawing and screaming. And what happened? Now that's a funny picture. But you put yourself in Adam's shoes. Here's what needs to rise up in this place right now. Is an awareness that the grace of God is just as big a need in my life today as it was the day I got the Holy Ghost. That I can never get to a place where I feel like I can do this without him. That I can never get to a place where I feel, because he will expel me and allow me to do it. And you know why they did it? They lost the fear of God. They lost the respect of God. Say, well, how do you know they lost the respect? Because his word meant nothing to them now. Yes, ma'am. And you there always are. That's what the book says. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah. Yep, there are. Adam didn't leave willingly. Nor, Sister Miss Jane, did he want to stay gone. Because the Lord put a flaming sword in the hand of an angel. Imagine the initial dismay and then the paralyzing fear that consumed them as they wandered into the unknown, leaving behind the comforting peace, power, and presence of God to go into a life of fear, toil, and uncertainty. This didn't work out like it was supposed to. Ladies and gentlemen, if we do not get a revival of the fear of God, we're going to find ourselves much more in common with Adam than we're comfortable with. He, I felt this in my spirit tonight. He told him in Genesis chapter 6, I will not always strive with man. That word strive means to wrestle or to fight. Or he, he will not always try to fight you to help you. There's got to be a revival of the fear of the Lord. There's got to be a revival of the awareness that I owe it to him to obey his word. Let's talk about a little bit more order. The tabernacle. Exodus 25, 8 and 9. God made a covenant with a man named Abraham. He, his son Isaac, and his son Jacob, which is Abraham's grandson, were the fathers of the nation of Israel. They were God's chosen people. It was a family of 70 who left Canaan, as it were, to go down to Egypt during a famine, and there they became a mighty nation. So mighty... I can preach, I'm going to preach about this sometime too. So mighty, they got Pharaoh scared of them. They grew so much. They experienced so much. They were so blessed that they activated the fearful imagination of Pharaoh, the Egyptian ruler, who took away their life of privilege and put them in bondage and slavery. This went on for several years till finally God sent a man named Moses to lead them out of bondage. During their journey from Egypt to their homeland of Canaan, God decided it was time for them to have a place where they could connect with God and he could connect with them. It was a glimpse into the restoration of relationship coming as a result of Calvary. Verse 8 says, And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. But look at verse 9. You got that one for me? According to all that I show thee, 
after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall you make it. You're not just going to willy-nilly go out there and throw up a few boards and throw up a few skins, but if you're going to build me a place, it's going to be a place according to my design and my pattern. Clear instructions were given to do with materials, measurement, furnishings, and even the offerings they would bring. And it was an earthly sanctuary that was reflecting of a heavenly one. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse number 5 says, Who serve under the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern that I showed you in the mountain. The, the law, the commandments, the pattern for the tabernacle. He said, don't sway from it, don't change it, don't make it anything. I, I had the, oh. Does anybody know who the, the most prolific evangelical preacher is in the United States, perhaps in the world? No, sir, but that's close. His daddy just died here a few weeks ago. And he's got this great movement going. Everybody follows him. Everybody listens to him. I'm not going to call his name because I might end up with somebody at my door, you know. But his first name's Andy and his last name's Stanley. And he's got this big deal going on that the Bible is not our authority anymore. He's got this big thing going that the Bible is not where we find out about salvation anymore. And people are buying it lock, stock, barrel, and cookie crumb. But how do you get away when the Lord said it's got to be just like I told you in the mountain? How do we know what he told him in the mountain? In the Bible. God has given us a pattern. God has given us a plan. God has given us the way he wants it to be. And if it's going to be anything less, when he looks at it, he'll say it's not good. Because Brother Shannon, he did it to himself in the beginning. Nine and 23 and 24. It was therefore necessary that the pattern of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. That's, that's those that are going to be in heaven. For Christ has not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, which means the holy place that was in the tabernacle that was made with hands was a figure of the true holy of holies. See it? He didn't enter into the Holy of Holies behind the veil. The veil is torn. But he entered into the, the presence of God at the mercy seat with the law and God's provision and God's plans in the heavenly. It's a better sanctuary. It's a better pattern. It's for better things. Which now appear in the presence of God for us. That they may make all that I have commanded you. I'm going to do this and then we'll go. It's going to be close enough to being done. Because this is where I wanted to get tonight. Exodus 31, 1 through 3 and then 6. That they may make all that I have commanded you. So the Lord said, I might have to teach this whole thing over again next week because just feels like I might have to. So the Lord said, I want you to make this tabernacle out of this particular material to these particular dimensions out of, out of uh, uh, the everything has got to be just like I tell you to. Now this is incredible. This is powerful. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, next verse, how many of y'all Talk about Bezalel. Is that a household name? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, and Bezalel. Hmm. Bezalel. You never heard of him before, unless you just read this in the Bible. But Moses said, I have called by name. I love it. The great big God reached down into the children of Israel. He picked a man named Bezalel the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. Verse, next verse. And I have filled him with the spirit of God, 
in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. I have filled him. The Lord said, I want it. Oh, my goodness gracious, this is so beautiful. The Lord said, I want it this way, I want it this way, I want it this way, and I want it this way. And what is more, I've already put it in somebody to give them the ability to do it. Oh, my goodness. I don't know if we can live that way. I don't know if we can measure up to that. Looks like you can to me. If he calls you to it, he's prepared you to do it. Oh, my goodness. Look at here. He ain't done. Next verse. And behold, I have given with him. That's with Bezalel, a holy ab. Y'all know him too, don't you? Bezalel. We've talked about this before, Sister Callie. Bezalel and a holy bill. They were born for this moment. And they were given everything they needed for this moment. Because God told the people it's got to be this way and it's got to be this way and it's got to be this way. And in case you're wondering if you can pull it off, I've got some people that I've already put it in them, the ability, the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding to do what I want you to do. You think the Lord doesn't want you to succeed? You think the Lord doesn't want you to overcome? You think the Lord doesn't want you to make it and survive and thrive and become what he called you to be? He's already put it in you. Does that make sense? Yes. I wish somebody would, you know, oh, I wish somebody would grasp a hold of this so powerful that they would almost jump up and say, I think I'm Bezalel. I think I'm a Holoba. I'm not, ooh, I'm not Isaiah and I'm not Ezekiel and I'm not Peter and James and John, but I believe I'm Bezalel. I can connect with him. Didn't nobody know who he was. Didn't nobody know anything about him. It looks like, Brother Johnny, it looks like Moses didn't even know who he was because the, yeah, the Lord had to call him to Moses' attention. Yes, sir. It's a, it's a pattern of it. It's the like. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, it's where he was taking us. Yes. Aholiab, the son of Ahishamach. Y'all know, all know who that is. You thought about naming your kids that someday. <laughs> Isn't it amazing that God just reached down into the people of Israel and there was a little baby boy that was born and he was going to rise up and become the leader of doing what God wants. You see that, Brother Jerry? He said, I want you to do it this way, and I've already blessed somebody with the ability to do it. Right, right. Connor, what do you think would happen to all of us if we would realize God is that specific? And God, he said, oh, my Lord. Brother Cody said, I called him by name. Come here. Hurry up. Come here. <laughs> the Lord didn't see Cody Pikey walk into the River Bend Pentecostals. And tell Gabriel and Michael and, and all the other angels, does anybody know this dude? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, no, I would argue with you that the, that the morning Cody Pikey walked in here the first time, that Michael and Gabriel and all the other angels were standing with the Lord watching because they've been waiting on that day. They've been waiting on that moment. And it's the same for every last one of us. So why don't we stop being sissies and why don't we stop being prideful and stubborn and rebellious and realize I've been called for this. I've been empowered for this. I am not weak. I am strong. I am the head and not the tail. I'm from above and not beneath. This is me in the kingdom of God. And he knew he got Christian. And he knew he got Austin. And he knew he got Terrence, a man of God. And he knew he got Dana and Katie and Blake and everybody. He knows who you are. Why in the cotton-picking world would we worship somebody out there that don't even know us? Right. Sister Maria, when he comes and ministers to me, he ministers to me. Not generic. Not just like generic pouring out his blessing. But when I'm depressed, he lifts me. When my head's down, he lifts it up. The fear of the Lord. Who's a God like this? 
Who's a God like this? That they may make all that I have commanded thee. He did not, with the commandment, leave them to themselves and to their own ends and just say, well, do what I told you. But he put into men the ability to do what he told them to do. Think about it. Think about it. I know I got to quit, but think about it. How beautiful and powerful that is. Why in the world? You see now why the devil's always telling you you're no good. He's always telling you you're a fake, hypocrite. Everybody in here knows everything you've ever done. Somebody saw you last week lose your cool up on Main Street. But I want to worship the Lord, but I can't worship because they know about me. What's going to happen to us when we realize the only knowledge I need to worry about is the one that he had of me when he brought me here, Derek Cummins? Say, well, but I messed this up and I messed that up. Brother Jerry, he knew that when he called us. It, it brings, it's, you say, well, well, I guess we can just do whatever in the world we want to. Are you crazy? How, why in the world would you have that mentality when you look in the book, Brother Ronnie, and see God's got a plan? And he had a plan in place before it got started, called a pattern. And it's because he's got something coming down the road that I'm going to be a part of. Oh, my Lord. Go ahead, brother. Uh huh. Uh huh. And we pray for clarity of our scripture views and our focus and our faith in this body of Christ. Uh huh. I, I pray that prayer a lot, and I've become more and more willing and to submit to uh -huh. His will over my will for the for the clarity or clarification of what my purpose is, where do I belong. Mm -hmm. uh, I started to say, why does your flesh want to fight against it? But then you answered it. I don't want to submit. I, I, I want it to be, I want it, but I want it to be my way. Yeah. You know, but, but we all have that spiritual gift, purposeful body of Christ within us. And I think, well, I'll just speak of the words. For me, you know, it, it took me being surrounded by other spiritual people, other Christian people, Christ centered lifestyles, uh -huh. to help me realize even that fact. Yep. But it has to come with, and you're right. But the Bible says very clearly, to whom much is given, much is required. And, and I said this before, I don't want to get in an argument with anybody. I, I hope your baby plays Little League and gets a, a trophy every cotton-picking year. But the world mentality of everybody gets a trophy, everybody gets a prize, you know, everybody gets a stimulus check. You know we're paying them back. I mean, come on, seriously, we're paying them back. Six dollar gallon of milk. What did we get up to? Six dollar a dozen eggs? We're paying them back. Ain't nothing free. Oh, I, I don't want to burst your bubble, but how's it working out for us? But we, Brother Shannon, we put so much faith and so much emphasis in that stuff. But we've got a God who's never failed us who's never let us now, 
And when we read in the word of the Lord, we find out that I'm here by his purpose, that he created me and put me here. But I, I'm not sure if tomorrow I'm going to be wanting to do what he wants me to do or not. But I'll be back Wednesday, I'm Sunday. Get my praise on. Woo-wee. Really. But without the fear of God, you're going to show up here after the trumpet sounds and you're still going to get your praise on. You're going to think it's just all like normal. But it's not. Because the day doesn't come without order. Exodus 39. According to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so the children of Israel made all the work. I, I don't know if I can do that or not. This Bible study blows that out of the water. Sure you can. Sure you can. And Moses did look upon all the work, and behold, they had done it as the Lord had commanded. Even so had they done it, and Moses blessed them. Then verse 2, and the Lord said unto Moses, on the first day of the first month shalt thou set up the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation. Why hasn't that day come for us? Why hasn't that day? I stood over a chair in here. Well, on Sunday mornings, I pray for y'all according to where you sit because y'all be sitting in the same place all the time. When the Lord leads me, I pray over you. And the Lord led me to pray over somebody and I didn't know what to pray. So I just began to pray in the Holy Ghost. It was powerful. It was powerful. You're here tonight. You're here tonight. But we wonder, why hasn't that day come? Why haven't we built our tabernacle? Why haven't we finished what God started? And I'm going to ask you, why haven't you? you? Say, well, I just hadn't worked hard enough. The Lord hadn't given his approval because order is not present. Well, I, you can't have it your way. This ain't Burger King. It's not. This is not charisma. Just, just do whatever makes you feel good. Somebody told me the other day about a pastor. He'll baptize you whichever way you want. Jesus' name, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Jesus' name and the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Whatever you want. God don't roll like that. That's right. That's right. Woo. He said in the book of Isaiah, line upon line, precept upon precept. We read it, Sister Miss Jane Deuce preached about it. Did y'all read that in the book of Amos? Anybody got over into Amos yet? When he got the plumb line, huh? I read that this morning. Anybody read your bread yet? Huh? He hung up the plumb line and he said it's how it's going to be. Oh, my Lord. And the king said, Amos, get away from here. I don't want to hear anything you got to say. And Amos said, you don't understand. I ain't a prophet. I'm a shepherd. But the Lord came and called me from following those sheep. And he sent me to tell you the truth. He sent me to tell you the truth. The day won't come without order. Everything can be in place. You can have what you need. But until you've got order, the day won't come. Then the glory a cloud came down and covered the tent. The glory filled the tabernacle. And the glory, think about this, think about this. The glory filled the tabernacle and everybody else had to leave. We think we're not blessed. What is the glory of the Lord? Moses said in Exodus 33 and 18, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. He used the Hebrew word kabod, K-A-B-O-W-D. It's on your paper, which says, I want to see all your splendor, all your beauty, all your majesty. And God replied, Exodus 33 and 19, and he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. That comes from the Hebrew word T-U-W-H, tuch, probably, because that's how Hebrews do everything. And that word means good in the widest sense. Notice it's two different words. 
two understandings of the glory. There's man's understanding and there's God's understanding. Man's understanding is limited to what he can perceive and comprehend and what he can even want. God's perception is unlimited. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It is not the glory of man. It is not the glory of man's accolades. It is not the glory of the world. It's not the glory of money. It's not the glory of possessions. It's the unlimited glory that Jesus paid for on Calvary. That glory that sin kept us from. From that perfect covering. It's the unlimited glory so there will always be more. You can't rest on your laurels. But it will not come until there's order. Say, well, I don't like order. I'm struggling right now. I am struggling right now with several people who don't like order. Brother T.F. Tenney said, you stand with me. Brother T.F. Tenney said, if the Bible could be summarized in one word, it would be submit. We live in a world... I don't have to elaborate. I don't have to get mean or ugly. But we live in a world that every day is attempting to redefine order. Abigail says, time to go. <laughs> Lord, we love you tonight. We appreciate you. Thank you for your blessings, for your spirit, your power. Thank you for the order that you've given us. I pray, at least in my own life, God, that I get a hunger for it. You gave us what we need. Bezalel is here, Aholabah is here, and every craftsman, everybody that has ability, they're all here. And they're starting to spread their wings a little bit, God. But I pray that we come to the realization tonight that it's not going to happen without order. The reason why we live unfulfilled and the reason why we're like, on a, like a hamster running on a wheel every day of our life is because we refuse to submit to your order. We've got to submit to your order, Lord. We've got to submit to the man of God, the spirit of God, and the word of God. The home has got to be in order. The job has got to be in order. We've got to be punctual. We have got to be organized. We've got to have boundaries. We have got to surrender to the will of God. Lord, you put it in our path every day. Let us do it. Let us surrender to it. And you will activate the gifts that are already in us. And the tabernacle will be raised up on the day it was intended. If we find your order, let us not lose the fear of God, the awareness that you are the only true God. It is your way. It is your will. It's not ours. It's not our friends. It's not popular opinion. It's not the media, but it's you. The word of God stand. It's sure. And you know them that are yours. I'm glad you know my name, Lord. And I pray, God, that I will live my life with respect toward that. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sunday morning at 10's elements went at 11 is worship.